morning again. It's raining today. Let's see, we've had almost an inch overnight. 0.91 inches of rain. So, um, it is agronomy meeting Thursday. Starts in 10 minutes. However, this one's about cover crops and stuff that we don't really do or care about too much. So I think I'm going to skip it. Brock's going to be here in a few minutes and we're going to go down and work on um, getting that heater hung in my seed warehouse there. So that is the plan. We do have a crop insurance meeting this afternoon about buying crop insurance for the year, which I hate crop insurance, but it's one of those things that you just kind of got to have it. And you don't have to, but we do. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to get a few things around and um, when Brock gets here, we will head down and start hanging some pipe. Brock's here. Good morning, Brock. We've got our uh, non-fun heater, the one that I've been using, running a little bit to get us some heat. It'll get real warm up high where we're going to be working uh, later. But we're going to lay, we're going to start with this heater, try and get this hung so we're um, reading the directions and laying it out. Burner's going to go down here, and then there is, the pipes are a little bit different. This is a combustion chamber. I think there's another section of combustion chamber somewhere. They're labeled. And then the rest are just a little bit different that are the the heat chain I don't know what they call them but anyway we're getting them laid out and I don't know if we're supposed to assemble this thing on the ground and lift the whole thing up there in one shot which I mean we can do it but it's gonna be a little difficult or um, how exactly that works so we're, we're gonna figure it out but the pipes got to go together there's some couplers clamps somewhere that we use to fit them together and the, they got these uh, brackets with some cables to hang it and heat shields that go on the top and so we're gonna get it all laid out here. Okay, we got some stuff laid out here. All the uh, combustion pipes are kind of where we want them or where they need to go. And this first one is loosely put together. We haven't tightened the clamp up yet. We were debating whether we have to assemble this whole thing on the ground and try and hang it at once, or if we can assemble it up there. And I think what we have decided is we're gonna put the first piece together, get the, the burner, the first pipe hung up, and then we can do it piece by piece from there. Um, however, so we've got these fancy cables here that um, oh, it's got an eye on the one end that we can hang and then it's got this grapple clip whatever the heck they call that thing that we can adjust the height with them uh, cut the excess cable off and that'll be really nice however I need to be able to hang this and we're gonna be hanging from the wood right in the center of the beat barn up there and so we need some eye bolts or something to hook this on I don't want to just put a nail or a screw in and hook that and expect it to stay um, so we're gonna run to town to the hardware store grab some eye bolts that we can drill into there and um and and have a good anchoring spot to to, to hang this thing um we're just trying to figure out what else we need to do looking at our electrical a little bit on what how we're going to get power up there because i got to get an outlet up there to plug this thing in and um you know i've got a bunch of conduit runs that go up already whether we can shove another circuit in one of those conduit runs or if we had to run a whole new run from the box up to the peak, I don't know. But we're we're figuring that out. So we're gonna start with eye bolts. We'll come back and we'll get this heater hung up, and then we'll worry about making it work from there. <laughs> Trying to take to go to the fire the, the the hardware store to get parts, and I got Brock with me, and now I have to go drop him off at the fire department. Good thing it's just down the road. Three we're, blocks. We're already very close. So first gonna be the he's same. gonna be faster than if he had um, started out at the farm. I don't have lights. Go save the world, Brock. Should I wait here for the fire trucks to leave? If I had my GoPro, I would hand it to him and say, hey, go, go film this. Here comes the doors. I'm going to wait here for a second, see if they just take off, or if they're waiting for more people to get here. Structure fire, somewhere. There he goes. He said he was going to get to drive. I don't know if he is or not. Well, go, boys. Oh, 
There's a couple more coming. Go Brock, go! All right, back to our parts run. He's gonna have to find a ride back to the farm because I'm not sitting here waiting for him to get back. All right, I got our hooks that we need. I actually got two different lengths, um, partially because they didn't have enough of one length and partially because I actually might be able to use two different lengths due to the way that those uh, roof purlins, uh overlap each other there, the wood boards and stuff. So um, we need to get the main lift and go up there and try and put some of these eye bolts in. So our heater is gonna hang right underneath this first uh, truss but I need to be able to open this top compartment and the sides on it, so I'm gonna actually come back just to this side of it a little bit. And uh, we'll get some eye bolts put in there for, for the two on the heater. And then there's another one right here. And this one is, you know, it's a little flexible in where it can be. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and then we'll have to measure and put one in for the other end. And then after that, that piece can go up. We can hang it. Hopefully Brock will be back uh, and we can we can go from there. But uh, we're going to get our, our, our lift position so we can get up there and get some eye bolts put in. I've got a drill so we can drill a hole uh, and then thread this in and it should work. All right, we are up here where our heater is going to hang. So... Um, I know from measuring there that my hanging um, hooks on the heater to the where I want this truss to be is about 11 and a half, 12 inches. So I measured from here over 12 inches. And then I also know that the distance between them, the hooks, left and right, or side to side, is 11 and a quarter. And that's just outside of these boards and so what we're going to do is measure up two inches on all of these we're going to drill and we're actually going to have to drill from the outside through all the way through the middle because on these two i want the hooks outside on the rest of them i want the hooks in the middle but i don't have enough room to get my drill in there and so we're just going to have to drill from the outside we'll go all the way through and then we can thread our uh, eye bolt in from the inside there so uh, i'm going to go ahead and get these drilled and we'll get our eye bolts threaded in and then we can go around the beam to the other side and measure for where the hooks are or the the, the hanger brackets are going to go the other ones okay i got my two hooks back over there and i moved and i knew that uh, from that hook to where my next hanger goes is 28 inches so i measured that drilled the hole and we put this hook in and i used the longer one here because it gets it closer to the peak we're gonna be, we're gonna be just off center just a touch but it's very close uh, it'll work and so yeah um, those three should be good now I need to go down and measure the distance from the hanger that's right there to the one on the other end of that pipe and see how far that way it should be just under 10 feet um, where we need to put the next one and then after that we're ready for the first piece to come up here so yeah we'll see how this goes here also, I am shutting my lift off when I'm not using it, and I'm just sitting here because, I mean, I don't think that I have to worry about carbon monoxide in here, but it is a gas engine running inside. This building is not that tight. I've also got my heater burning over there. I have a carbon monoxide detector in here somewhere. I think it's over there, or maybe over there. Um, and I've had it on when I've been running my heaters in here before. I've never had any CO, so it's not really something I'm super concerned about, but there is... An engine running inside so we're gonna shut it off and minimize that as much as possible ha huh, well look at that I can actually measure something chains to the first hanger two feet four inches also known as 28 inches the next one eight feet ten so we can uh, measure eight feet ten inches and uh, drill our next or put our next hanger in and then it's nine feet eight for every subsequent one from there because there's four inches of overlap on every pipe and they're ten foot pipes Okay, got it. Also to note, I am making a small cut on the end of that loop just to give me enough room to get that loop with a cable in there. They were too tight and there's no way to thread it because it's already looped on the cable and clamped onto place. So I, I cut it just enough to get that in there. So, all right, I'm ready to hang that. Do you think I can do this by myself or do I need, uh, do I need Brock to be here? Check it out, we got a heater hanging. That was not that hard. I just kind of set it on the rail here and lifted it up and got the hooks on and then we just kind of tightened from there. So we're gonna need to get a level. 
because uh, this thing has to be level side to side here that we can adjust with these two and then also the length of the pipes need to be level I know that end one needs to come up a little bit we're pitched down and I want to keep it right below my truss there but we're good here because I can I can get to all of these to get that open if necessary or when necessary I suppose um, but we can keep it as far that way as we can and everything should just piece up there together pretty easily from here so there's a band clamp that goes on tighten up it's uh, 9 16 bolts in there and it says you should be able to see the seam which is right there when uh, you get it tight so we we've we're doing okay here well I got the second section of pipe up there I gotta tighten my clamp up yet I didn't have my impact I forgot to take it up but uh, that clamp the second one is stainless steel the other ones are not, I, for whatever reason, they want stainless on the second one. Probably the hottest point on the, the whole pipe. Um, and I gotta go get a level, and it's lunchtime, so we're gonna go do all those things. And I, while I can do this, it would be easier with some help. So hopefully, Brock will be back around, but I haven't heard from him. Oh my goodness! It feels like April. Sun's shining, and it's, it was raining. It's probably warmer out here than it is inside I should just open the doors up instead of running my heater Wow that's changed a lot since the last time I came outside like two hours ago I am back from lunch I did indeed open the door up because it's 55 degrees outside and I looked at my thermometer in here it said 49 I said well we'll just we'll just go ahead and open the door then won't we so we are uh, getting back to hanging pipe I got our big magnetic six foot level and I've got the first two pieces leveled and I got our little one foot level that I used to level it side to side and then it forgot and left hanging up there. So we're gonna have to get that down, but we're gonna go ahead and take the next section of pipe up there first. And uh, I put another eyelet in right before that beam and uh, we'll go get this one hung up there. Nope, I take that back. It's one o'clock. I forgot we got our crop insurance meeting, so I gotta do that. And then we'll come back and work on this. Ha, ah, the crop insurance meeting. I'm um I'm not a big fan of crop insurance. I kind of wish the program didn't exist at all. But it's one of those things that in order to remain competitive, which <sighs> competitive sounds like the wrong word, but it's it it kind of is what it is. Um you need it in order to protect yourself because if something happened, I mean, it's insurance. You, you don't buy insurance wanting to use it, but at the same time, crop insurance creates, um, I don't know how to say it exactly, but it gives people reasons to not do things the way that it should be done and get away with it and take risks that maybe shouldn't be taken kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but anyway, it is something that we do buy, we use, it is a subsidized program, and uh, that's the only reason that we do it, and make it, because it makes it reasonably and affordable, and uh, we don't buy the kind of coverage that a lot of people do, you can buy lots of different levels and pay for stuff on your own if you want, um, but we are, uh, we're basic 80% insurance guarantee people, and we've um, had good enough yields the last few years to be able to run our guarantees up that it's good it helps it is highly unlikely oh yeah Brock's back it is highly unlikely that we will ever have um, a yield trigger where we have poor enough yields that it triggers a crop insurance claim it's possible but it's unlikely it is more likely that we have a 2019 scenario where uh, we couldn't get stuff planted. We had to prevent plant claim. That's that's a distinct possibility. Or a quality issue where we have vomitoxin in our corn or our wheat or something that, that reduces the marketability and the quality of it, and this would help cover that. Or the big thing is the prices drop. So our prices are being set right now, a spring price guarantee that's set in February. And uh, if that price happens to drop drastically between now and fall harvest, and we have average or below average yields, that would trigger a crop insurance payment. When we have outstanding yields, or really high prices, it, it doesn't do anything for us. But that means we have good crops and things are in good shape as it is. Anyway, so if you have questions on that, I'd be happy to try and answer them. It's just a complicated program and I'm not a big fan of it. So, Brock, we gotta keep hanging pipe. We got, we got some up there. Oh, you wanna tell people about your fire?
see my family home. And lost House caught on fire. Oh, no. Lost everything. You were gone for a while. There was a lot of fire, even when I got here. And it was ways away. We sat in the driveway for two minutes. I know we had to wait on more people. <laughs> It's the middle of the day. Give us a break. We're a volunteer <laughs> fire department. <laughs> All right. Very good. Tightening up the clamp. Keep going. Ah, ah, ah. Not so much. Just a little bit. Keep hitting each one a little bit. I don't see the seam yet. You're supposed to see it. Oh, yeah. That's right there. Okay. We're not quite centered, but that's okay. Okay. Now we got to get our level on there and adjust the strap on the other side so we got to reposition so we can reach it well we're not at a good angle for you to see it but we got heat shield on the first three runs that's half of it um we got a fan up here that we've got to get down brock tell everybody how we hung this fan oh yeah forklift do you remember top of the seed box uh-huh we couldn't, couldn't reach it with the forklift so we had an empty seed box that we put on the forklift and i stood on top of it with the fan while brock lifted me up here you think this is safer brock i'd say so yeah uh-huh Anyway, our fan is in the way, so we're going to take it down. Which is pretty easy if Brock can get that to come off of there. I have to tip it. Get out of the way. There you go. Cool. Uh, we'll probably take that board down, but that's what we needed to do for now. So, down we go. harder that would have been with scaffolding? Yeah. Oh man, this is awesome. And carrying all those pieces up there? All right, we got to get that uh, end cap on the heat shield and we need to get some side cut pliers and trim off all our extra cable. They give you plenty of cable. We could hang that thing halfway down the roof if we wanted to. All the cable. Um, yeah, we'll do that. So one last thing we got to do on this heater is put this baffle in. It goes in the far end of it and vertical and just kind of helps swirl the air around, I guess, get the last little bit of heat out. Brock says he can do it. Hey, Brock, don't fall out. <laughs> all right, we're working on electrical trying to figure that out. So you can see I've got all this conduit going up there already and trying to figure out how are we going to do this uh, to get a plug up there. And uh, the problem is my, my two conduits that go all the way up to the ceiling are full. Like there's a lot of wires in them already. Uh, and that box that I've got buried up in there is full. I'm not putting any more wires in it. So I could utilize this wire, this conduit, that's only got three wires going up to that box. I could come out of that box and go up from there with another conduit. Or we just come all the way back down to the box and run three quarter all the way up. And here's what I'm thinking right now. Um, I'm going to put this plug in for the heater, but I would also like to be able to, in the future, run another circuit for a potential um, fans, ceiling fans. And so I would like to run three-quarter inch conduit, not half inch, all the way up there, just to make it easier to pull all the wires and stuff, because uh, what I'm thinking right now might be a little tight, but we've got a lot of room above that heater to the ceiling, to the, the peak, right, where our cables are attached. I think that I could actually get a ceiling fan in above the heater. And then right in the peak of the center that would be set six to eight inches above the top of the heater and run in there and blow the heat straight down from it. So um, I'm tentatively planning on being able to do that so we could just come off of the, the where we end our conduit run with the plug for this, we could just keep extending it down to run a fan circuit. We would want to rheostat in there somewhere to control the fan speeds um, that could be mounted down here, but I think we can manage that you know, I could even come out of this box with a rheostat and then back up through. We could use that. It, whatever. 
we can make that work. So we're going to get a, figure out how to get conduit run up there um, with three quarter stuff. And I, I bought some conduit the other day, so I think we can I think we can make that happen. Well, our spring weather outside lasted exactly like three hours, and then it turned cold and rainy and windy again, so we closed the door up and turned the heater back on for a little bit. It's not bad in here, but it takes the chill out. So we were running electrical conduit, so we decided to come right out the side of this box. Um, didn't have exactly what I was looking for in a box connector, but we had this little offset that actually lets us get back to the wall, so we're right on the board there and can anchor it better. And then this uh, 90 that I can take the cover off to pull the wires easier and stuff. That'll work. And then uh, we're going up from there. We've got a fancy piece with a double bend in it to go up along the bottom of the uh, uh, end wall, roof, whatever that's called, truss. Um, and we're measuring and cutting a piece to go from the end of that up to the peak. And then we're going to have a 90 and kind of go up in another slight bend and run right across that roof out to the, the next one there. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're got her all ready to go here. And we brought this fancy little vice table thing here so I can secure pipe and cut it easier. We've got conduit all the way to right here, which is right by our heater. Zoom out for you. There you go. So we're going to put a box on here and then we're ready to pull wires. Got it all the way down. We got some fancy bends in here. It's, I mean, it's, it is what it is, but I, I'm pretty proud of myself for making those bends work. Okay, well, Brock had to go, but um, we had a good day. We got the heater hung and we got the conduit run, which I, 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 when I started this morning, I thought we'd get a little bit more done. And then the heater took a while and I'm like, well, if we get that up, we'll be doing good. And then we get the conduit run too. So I'm happy with that. So all I gotta do is pull wires there. That's easy. Uh, just run three wires up put a plug in that's that's nothing and uh, I'm gonna need a breaker I should look around and see if I got a circuit breaker um we've got to run gas line that's the big project yet is gas line so we got to get from that corner crossed up and across I've got all the pipe we've got our long sticks of black pipe with real couplers on the end real not thread protectors couplers like for real anyway um and I should have all the fittings and valves and stuff that I need there. I've got a regulator down at the farm, so we got to get that. Uh, I don't know if we'll need anything else or not. Um, the one thing I know that we don't have that I do need is vent pipe. So I got a few vent pipe pieces to go through the wall, but I did. They didn't have any B vent um, four inch stuff when I went to get that stuff. So uh, I need. I need single wall until we get to the wall, and then we're going to do a wall through the wall, and uh, we're going to have to cut a hole and figure that out. I might get an, a couple of elbows just to offset it a little bit so we can go out a flat instead of on a rib, but we'll see how that goes, and uh, we got to get a vent out. Other than that, what else? Oh, thermostat. we got to run thermostat wire down, and I'm trying to figure out where exactly to mount it. This would be the nice convenient spot, but that is an exterior wall or right in the corner of an exterior wall. I don't know if that's a great idea. Obviously, we're not super well insulated here, but there is inside over there and over here. This is kind of an interior wall, so pr probably mounting a thermostat on this wall would be better. Uh, maybe we'll just tack it down here below where that switch is or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It is 5.30, and uh, I'm going home. Actually, I'm already home. I'm going in. That's what I'm doing. That's awesome. I wish it wasn't raining and muddy so I could just walk up to the house. But it's raining and muddy and I don't have good enough grass to do that. Hopefully my grass fills in good this spring and I'll have a nice yard. Landscaping, that's that's the summer's project around the house. Landscaping. We'll get there. So thanks for watching everybody. Like, subscribe, questions and comments, leave them down below. Also wanted to let you guys know that I am going to Louisville to the farm show um, on Friday and Saturday of next week. So I will be there. I am pretty confident my wife will be there with me, at least for part of the show. Um, we're taking the boys, Rylan and Brayson, and I think my parents are coming, although there's a little question mark around that some. So, but we'll be there uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, most likely. So if you happen to be there, you see us, stop in, say hi. If you remind me, I might have one of these I'll hand you. 
especially if you're wearing some of my merch. That'd be awesome. You know how awesome that would be? Cool. So, anyway, uh, I am going to stop back at the farm here and talk to Dad real quick to see uh, if there's anything else important going on tomorrow. And uh, we will see you guys in the morning. So, thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. See you later.